Hi folks, hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. Uh, my website is jasonburnspreacher.com and also I have a, a website called Royal Blood Ministries. You can get me on Twitter, Jason Burns on Twitter and Facebook. And you can also get me on um, Royal Blood Ministries, uh, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook as well. Um, you can link from my uh, video uh, that says uh, big changes are happening. If you go there you can find the link to the Royal Blood Ministries underneath that video. Uh, it's good to be with you. We're just looking at the Word of God. Uh, I've just been... Uh, God used me recently uh, to baptize uh, a young gentleman and it's been a privilege to to be involved in such a baptism. And, uh, and now I'm discipling and encouraging this person uh, to grow in the Lord and I've done a study for this person today. I've just been to their house and now I'm coming back. And I thought I'd just do the Bible study here uh, for those who, who might want it. Now, I'm using the English Standard Version. Uh, I prefer the King James. I'm a King James man. We'll use, we'll use uh, this translation. And... Uh, Because the person's a young Christian and uh, the King James language is a bit too or, or archaic for them at the moment and it's just easy English to, to read so that's why I'm using this at the moment. So. so let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness and love. And Father, we praise you. We give you the glory. We give you the honour. And Father, we pray that you be blessed this Bible study to our hearts in your name and for your glory. Amen. 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 I will quote from the King James as well. Okay, so Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 25. Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of these things, of the things that have been accomplished among us, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word have delivered them to us, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may have certainty concerning the things you have been taught. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijai, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth, and they were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, both were advanced in years. Now while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside the hour of incense, and there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled, and when he saw him and fell upon him, but the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your Prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will be bear you a son, and you shall call his name John, and you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great before the Lord, and he must not drink wine or strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb, and he will turn many from the children of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. And Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this, for I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years? And the angel answered him, I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you, and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place, because you did not believe the words which will be fulfilled in their time. And the people were waiting for Zechariah, and they were wondering, at his delay in the temple, and when he came out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he kept making signs to them and remained mute, and when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived for five months. She kept herself hidden, saying, Thus the Lord has done for me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among people.
So, Luke was, the Gospel of Luke was written by Luke. We have Irenaeus, the early church father, who mentions Luke was the writer of Luke. And we have other early church fathers too. So I think it is without controversy that it's Luke. If there are modern scholars that disagree with that, I think it, their scholarship is very weak and suspect. And it's mainly the theories of men rather than actually looking at good historical information and evidence. So, you know, the, the historical information outside the Gospel of Luke show that Luke wrote the Gospel. Uh, internal evidence that Luke wrote the Gospel, if we look at Acts chapter 16, and we know that Acts is part of Luke. Acts chapter 16, verse 10 and 11. We read, And when Paul had seen the vision immediately, notice this, we, we sought to go on into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. So, you know, he says we. You know, so that's quite clear that, that uh, that's Luke there. Then if you look at Colossians chapter 4, uh, Colossians uh, chapter 4 Colossians, uh, it's after Philippians uh, Colossians uh, chapter 4 verse 14 we read these words, Luke, the beloved physician, greet you as does Demas. So Luke was a physician, uh, he was an honourable man, he was a missionary, and um, he's the man that wrote the Gospel of Luke. Now Luke writes in this way, Inasmuch as many have undertaken to compile a narrative of the things that have been accomplished among us. So there were other writings about Jesus. Verse 2, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word have delivered them to us. Uh, Luke wants to base his, his writing on eyewitnesses. Now, if you compare Luke to other ancient literature like Josephus and other Roman historians, Luke is, right, is, is using the same way they introduce their history. So Luke's saying, look, I'm writing serious history here. You need to take note. And it's based on eyewitnesses. Uh, Polybius, who was a historian in the 2nd century BC, said that to be a good historian you need to use eyewitness material. And he was, a, he, he was kind of a, a household name amongst historians in the 1st century. And so Luke is using the same Greek word that Polybius used, eyewitness, and he's saying, just in the tradition of Polybius, I want to do good history. Verse 3, it seemed good to me also, having followed all things closely for some time past, to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus, that you may with certainty concerning the things you have taught. So Luke wants to write an orderly account from beginning to end to get the basic facts of the life of Jesus. Now, if you read Mark chapter 1, verse 1, it says, you know, that it starts with the Jesus is the Son of God. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 1 it talks about the genealogy of Jesus and in John chapter 1 verse 1 and 4 in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, etc. So we have four gospels with four different beginnings. It shows you that each gospel is looking at the life of Jesus from a different perspective. And if people come along and say, oh there are, there are uh, contradictions within the gospels, just ask them, well what's the perspective of Matthew? What's the per perspective of Luke? And if they can't tell you what the perspective, what the aim of the author is, how can they say there are contradictions? Because they don't really understand the book. And Luke is saying, look, Jesus has fulfilled uh, the scriptures. Jesus has fulfilled the Old Testament. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is historically real. The prologue is in one sentence and apparently it's in the finest of Greek. So this is a very, very literary, able man. So then we go from verse 5. In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a great name, Zechariah. There was a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijah. 
and his wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. So in the days of Herod, that's Herod the Great, that's Herod who was nasty and cruel. There were these two people, Elizabeth and, and uh, Zechariah, and they were walking humbly with God. In the midst of evil, were evil politicians, evil people who, who were in power, there will still be a faithful remnant who were faithful to the Lord. Verse 7. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren and both were advanced in years. Now, now they had a need and that need was desperate. And you might have a need and it might be desperate, but God will show his power in your desperation. For now while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord to burn incense. And the whole multitude of people were praying outside the hour of incense. There, there were three priests that went into the temple at the time. And the main priest was the one who did the incense, which was a symbol of prayer. You could read uh, Psalm 141 verse 2, where it connects incense and prayer. So, Zechariah is in, is in an attitude of prayer. The people were in an attitude of prayer. And an angel appears, and there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. How different is that compared to the revelations that people say they have today? Many people today say they've seen an angel. And they say how great it was, how wonderful. But whenever an angel appears in the Bible, people are full of fear because these angels were awesome. They were awesome. You don't get this in visions today. People don't really sense the real angels because they are making them up because it's not what it's like in the Old and New Testament where people stand in awe of these angels. I'll just leave that. Sorry about that. And this angel... And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him. Sorry. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, fell upon him, and, and, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will shall call his name John. And many will rejoice, and you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great before the Lord and he must not drink wine or strong drink and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit and from the mother's womb and he will turn away of the children of Israel from the Lord and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared so if we go to Malachi chapter 4, it's the last Old Testament book in your Old Testament. If you've got a Bible, get a Bible and check what I'm saying. Malachi uh, chapter 4, verse 4 and 6. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day. Of the Lord comes and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and to the hearts of the children to the fathers lest I come and strike the land with a decree of, of utter destruction so the angel is saying that a promise has been kept God has promised that he'll send Elijah uh, send uh, prophet John the Baptist and it's come that the promise is kept and not only that even in the midst of Zechariah and, and Elizabeth Payne not having a child, it's now going to be fulfilled to them. Promise to them is going to be fulfilled and they're going to be blessed. John the Baptist had the spirit of Elijah. Our Lord says this in uh, Matthew chapter 17 verse 12. Matthew 17 verse 12. But I tell you that Elijah has come or already come, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased, so also the Son of Man will certainly suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. So John the Baptist 
was born with the spirit of Elijah. He fulfilled the prophecy that he would be the Elijah. If you turn to 1 Kings, what was Elijah like? Let's look at 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 20 to 40. So Ahab sent the people of Israel and gathered their prophets together at Mount Carmel. And Elijah came near to all the people and said, How long will you go between the two different opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people did not answer him a word. Then Elijah said to the people, I, even I only am left, a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450. Let two bulls be given to us, and let them choose one bull for themselves, and cut it in pieces, and lay it on the wood, but put no fire to it, and it will prepare the bull, and lay it on the wood, and put no fire to it. And you call upon the name of your God, and I will call upon the name of the Lord, and the God who answers by fire, he is God. And all the people answered, it is well spoken. Then Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, choose for yourself one bull, and prepare it first. For you were many, and called upon the name of your God, but put no fire to it. And they took the bull that was given them, and they prepared it, and called upon the name of Baal, from morning until noon, saying, Go Baal, answer us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. And they limped around the altar, and they had made. And at noon Elijah mocked them, saying, Cry aloud, for he is God. Either he is musing, or he is believing himself, or he is on a journey, or perhaps he is asleep, and must be awakened. They cried aloud and cut themselves after their custom with the swords and lances until the blood gushed upon them. And as suddenly passed, they raved on until the time of the offering of oblation. But there was no voice, no one answered, and no one paid attention. Then Elijah said to all the people, Come near to me. And all the people came near to him, and he repaired the altar of the Lord that had been thrown down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Jacob, to whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord, and he made a, a trench about the altar as a great as wood contained two seeds of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood. And he said, Fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and on the wood. He said, Do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, Do it a third time. And they did it a third time. And the water ran the altar and filled the trench also with water. And at the time of the offering of the oblation, Elijah the prophet came near and said, O Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Israel, let it be known this day that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant, and that I have done all things at your word. Answer me, O Lord, answer me. This people may know that you, O Lord, are God, and that you have turned their hearts back, that the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood and the stones and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and said, The Lord, he is God, the Lord, he is God. And Elijah said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal, let not one of them escape. They seized them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook in Kishon and slaughtered them there. So here, John the Baptist was to be born with the spirit of Elijah. So what was the spirit of Elijah? He was a man absolutely dedicated to the glory of God. He, he was passionate about the glory of God. John the Baptist was passionate about the glory of God. Are you passionate in your life about the glory of God? Secondly, Elijah did not fear the enemies of God. He feared God rather than the enemies. John the Baptist was fearless before, or before men. He didn't fear men. He feared God rather than men. And... The question is, do you fear God or do you fear men? Um, some great lessons there. So we'll, we'll go on. So here, God promises uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth that they would have a child. And, and uh, Zechariah can't believe it. He kind of can't believe it, so he's struck dumb. And, and if God gives you a promise, you've got to believe the promise. And you've got to trust God with the promise. And, and if you doubt the promise, you're going to lose the blessing. You've got to believe that God has given you a promise. 
God keeps his promises. Sometimes when we're in difficulty, we've got to hold on to the promise. Sometimes it might seem you've come to an end in yourself, an end in your situation, an end in your own resources. That is when the promise of God kicks in. That is when the promise of God is with you. That is when you're going to know whether you've got faith or not because the promise of God will kick in. In Nahum chapter 1 verse 7 it says the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. Hold on to that promise that God is with you in the midst of your trouble. Let, let's go to Genesis 18. Genesis 18. Forgive me, I've not used the King James. Um, I am a King James man myself. I'm not King James only man, but I, I believe that many of these modern translations are not very trustworthy at the moment with a lot of bad scholarship on textual criticism. Genesis chapter 18, verse 1 uh, to 15. And the Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Ma Mimer, and he sat at the door of his tent in the heat of the day, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there th three men were standing in front of him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door and met them, and bowed himself to the earth, and said, O Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourself under the tree. While I bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh yourself, and after that you may pa pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham went quickly into the tent to Sarah and said, Quick, three seeds of fine flour, uh, can eat it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf and tender and good and gave it to a young man who prepared it quickly. And he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. He stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? And he said, She is in the tent. And the Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening to the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years, and the way of woman had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out, and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say shall i indeed bear a child now that i am old is anything too hard for the lord at the appointed time i will return to you about this time next year and sarah shall have a son but sarah denied it saying i did not laugh she was afraid and said no but you did laugh and then if you turn to uh, genesis 21 verse 1 and 2 the lord visited sarah and he said and the as he said and the Lord did so to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. So we've come to the end of the study and here what we learn is that Sarah and um, Abraham were given a promise. They were given a promise they would have a son. It seemed hopeless, yet God gave them a son. In your situation, it might seem hopeless, but God has promised to be with you. He's promised to help you, and he'll help you. He'll provide for you. He'll make a way because God keeps his promises. So don't look at by sight. Don't look at the situation by sight. Don't look at the situation by feelings. Hold on to the promise of God. God says that he will never leave you or forsake you, that he is good, and that he will make a way for you. Now, the other thing as well, that God promised Abraham that he would have a people, that he would have a seed. And God kept his promise. He kept his promise that when he said that there would be a prophet, John the Baptist, and that was kept. God keeps his promise. So in the midst of your trial, in the midst of your difficulty, hold on to the promises of God. Don't look at your situation. Don't look at your problems. Let's just look at Nahum chapter 1. Nahum chapter 1.
be funny. We will get that, we will get that. Nahum chapter 1, verse 7. It says, The Lord is a good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. Hold on to the promise there. Hold on to a promise that God is with you. That he'll make a way from you. Don't look at the situation about how you feel or what the situation is. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. Lord, we're just trusting you and we know that you will make a way for us. You could also study, if you wanted to, Judges chapter 3, verse 2 and 5, and 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse... Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 1, in, in the life of Hannah, and how she had a... God provide a child for her. And Judges chapter 13, verse 2 and 5. But he says here, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who take refuge in him. God answered Zechariah's prayer, kept his promise, and gave him a son. And it was not only a son for him, but it was a son to bless the whole world. Because that son would point to the Messiah. God keeps his promise. He's promised to provide for you. He's promised to help you. He's promised to be with you. He's promised to take care of you. He's promised to help you. God will keep his promise. So hold on to his promises. And trust him in this situation. In the situation that you face today. Don't give up. Don't go back. Don't pack it in. But hold on. And say no. You promised. I stand on your word. Let's, let's pray. God willing, we'll look at, we'll follow on the Bible study another time, maybe next week, on uh, the rest of the chapter. So let's come before the Lord. Father God, we come before you today. We thank you that our faith is rooted in the historical. It's not myth or imagination, but Lord, Luke wrote good history, and we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah, and we Think of those words, not by my, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And we can't do a work without your Holy Spirit. And we pray for your power to serve, Lord. Each one of us, may we know your power. And Lord, some of us, Lord, we come to an end in ourselves, wondering where you are. Promises not fulfilled, and we feel like giving up. But Lord, you promised that you will fulfill your promises. You fulfilled it to Abraham and Sarah. You fulfilled it to Elizabeth. And Zachariah, and you'll fulfill it for us, Lord. You promised to be with your people. And Father, we pray, give us faith to trust in your word and to know that you are faithful. And we can rest in you. For Father, you are good and you are great and you are mighty and you are wonderful. And we praise you and worship you and give you the glory. We give you the honour, Father. And we thank you for this wonderful day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise his name, the King of heaven. La da 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 La da 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 da. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him, praise the everlasting King. Amen. Glory to you, Lord, and praise your holy name. King of kings and Lord of lords and mighty Saviour, mighty Lord, mighty King and mighty God, we thank you. Oh, praise his holy name. Amen. 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 God bless you, folks. God is good. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee. Who can tell what the Lord can do? Who can tell of his love for you? In the name of Jesus, Jesus, we have the victory. His name is higher than any other. His name is Jesus. 
His name is Lord. His name is wonderful. His name is Prince of Peace. His name is Mighty God, the King of Kings. His name is higher than any other. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is Wonderful. His name is Counselor. His name is Prince of Peace, the Mighty God. Amen. Praise His holy name. Give Him glory today. King of kings and Lord of lords. He's a mighty God, a great God, and a glorious God. He's over the mountains and He's over your life. Praise His holy name. Father, forgive us our sin. Forgive us our failure. Thank you that you're with us. Thank you, O oh God. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to you, Lord. Be with those who hear this word. Bless them and comfort them and strengthen them. Surround them and hedge them about with your love and power. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hope that was a blessing. And may God's richest love be with you today. In all that you do, God bless you. Please pray for me. Please be praying for me. And... Uh, Stand with me in prayer, stand with me in ministry, stand with me, please. I'm a man who loves the Word of God. I've made mistakes, we've all made mistakes, but I'm a man who loves this Word. I love the truth of God, and uh, I hold to the great Christian creeds, the Athanasius Creed, the Nicaea Creed, the Chalcedon Creed, and... Uh, the great reformers creeds and the great creeds of the uh, covenanters and Presbyterian creeds such as the uh, Westminster Confession and, and uh, I hold to what the Bible says and desire to preach the word of God so pray for me please I need your prayers I've been in the battle last week I was preaching in various towns in the north of England oh it was tough to get on them stepladders and preach in the middle of some of these tough areas full of Muslims and full of skeptics who, who are some of them very angry, very, very tough and not having any support sometimes. And I need prayer. If God wants me to continue to thunder the gospel up and down this country, I need prayer. I need your prayers. I need you to be praying for me daily. I need you to be pleading God's blessings upon me. So for please pray. I, I ask that you would pray. Because the work is getting tougher, it's getting harder, and uh, Satan doesn't want the gospel preached in this country, and he's trying everything he can to stamp it out. So pray that the gospel would, would uh, that souls would be saved, and God would be glorified in this country of the UK. Thank you, and may God bless you.